Well, hello, bros. It's time. James Hall, and welcome to Restoring Heroes, real biblical manhood in the counterfeit world, and empowered by the War Cry Podcast Network. <gasps> Woo! Look, I got a whole lot to say in a little bit of time, so I need you to keep your ears peeled and your eyes open, or your eyes peeled, you know, whatever, you know. You know the gist. You know the gist. You know what I'm trying to say to you. <laughs> All right, so let's get let's get down to business. Today's podcast, we are talking about be dangerous, and I got a quote for you from uh, what is this? Oh, C.S. Lewis. You never know how much you really believe anything until it's truth or falsehood becomes a matter of life and death to you c.s lewis so let me let me hit you with this first thing let me hit you with this first thing man having high having standards or convictions that you are willing to die for makes you dangerous having standards or convictions that you are willing to die for makes you dangerous. Now, I've been uh, I've been watching, not watching. What I'm talking, about, I've been reading this book called Jesus Freaks. Uh, it's a DC Talk and a Voice Voice of the Martyrs uh, partnership. Is a book made back in the, I think in the early 2000s, late 90s or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, those details are not really important. Yeah, 1999. So uh, there's just stories of people who are giving their life up for Jesus Christ, right? Um, and I want to share. I want to share some things to you. I want to you. I want to share some things with you. What is wrong with me today? All right, here we go. So this is uh, Propius. This is a, a Propius in the in the Roman Empire, uh, circa. 250 AD Propius this is the story Propius was whipped until the blood flowed then laden with chains and thrown into prison a few days later he was brought out by and commanded to sacrifice to the heathen gods he knew that he would be tortured and killed if he refused still he courageously said I come I come better prepared than before for what I have suffered has only strengthened me in my resolve in res my resolution sorry in my resolution employ your whole power upon me and you shall find that neither you, nor the emperor, nor the gods you serve, nor the devil who is your father shall compel me to worship idols. Propius was sent back for further torture and eventually death by the sword. You see, man, I want you to think, think about it. If you have a conviction or a standard, conviction or standard that you're willing to die for, it makes you the most dangerous man in the room. If you are willing to die for your standards, if you're willing to fall on the sword for your standards, if you're uncompromising with your standards, no matter what your job says, no matter what uh, the people around you say, no matter how many people fold, it makes you a dangerous person. When, when everyone is folding and you are standing, and when everyone is folding and you are choosing to stand, that makes you a dangerous man. That makes you dangerous. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, 
O King Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this manner. If it is so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he, and he will deliver us out of, out of your hands, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Daniel 3, Daniel chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. So when you're willing to, when you're willing to stand when everyone else is bowing, when you're willing to stand for what is right when everyone else is compromising, when you're willing to uh, stand on your principles and, and have, uh, have a hard line, lines you will not cross when everyone is crossing lines, when you're willing to, we're crossing lines like they're playing tic-tac-toe, when you're willing to have, a ba have boundaries when everyone else is boundaryless, when you're willing to have borders when all the borders are open in everyone else's life, that makes you a danger to mediocrity that makes you a dangerous man that makes you dangerous right that makes you dangerous believing in the most high god and and what he says makes you dangerous Believing in the most high God, believing in Jesus Christ, putting your life in Jesus Christ's hands and says, and say, whatever comes my way, I'm a trust in him. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I should fear no evil for you are with me. I, I don't have to fear. I could be strong and courageous because you are with me. That makes you a dangerous man. Because what can someone do to you? If God be for you, who could be against you? If you really believe that, that makes you dangerous, right? I tell you, my friend, I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body. And after that, have nothing more they can do that they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who after he has killed the body, after he is killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Why even the hairs on your head are numbered, are numbered. Fear not. You are more valuable. You have more value than any than many sparrows. You have more value than many sparrows. Luke 12, 4, Luke chapter chapter 12, verses 4 through 7. So if you believe in the most high God, if you believe in Jesus Christ, if you're putting your trust in Jesus Christ, you can you can put the pedal to the metal. Right. You can put the the, uh, the pedal to the metal. You can go hard. You could you could do that because, you know, you're loved, you're valuable. Right. But that makes that makes you a dangerous man because people without standards, people without um, without a backbone, people without a God that has their back. You make your you make them uncomfortable. You make them doubt themselves. So they lash out. Right. Because they doubt themselves, they'll lash out at you. They'll they'll or they'll argue with you. They'll be mad at you for making a decision, for for not compromising on the job, for for not compromising here, for not compromising there, right? For for having a standard, for not being not lying on a report. That makes you dangerous. For not be, you're not able to take a bribe. You can't be bribed. That makes you dangerous because you have standards. You have standards. That makes you a dangerous man. So let's having standards and convictions or slash convictions that you are willing to die for makes you dangerous. But having when everyone is folding 
and you are willing to stand up. When everyone is sitting down, you are willing to stand. When everyone is kneeling you and you are willing to stand, that makes you dangerous. Believing in the most high God and what he says makes you dangerous. Makes you dangerous. And I got a clip I want you to hear. Um, this is from Paul Washer, one of the guys I like listening to. I got a clip I want you to hear, and I, I want this to marinate in, in your head. So I, you couldn't touch the Apostle Paul. It wasn't because he was without fear. It's because he, he knew his God. I was sharing out in the in the foyer out here with some young with some men and, and they, we were talking about courage and I said, well you know, people do come up to me and they say, you know, boy, you said some pretty. You made people mad here tonight. That one guy looked like he was going to beat you up. You're not afraid of anybody. I said, no. It could just be possible I'm the most frightened, insecure man in this room. He said, well then how did you do that? I said, I want you to think about something. Let's say that a man walks up to me who is about three foot two, weighs about 28 pounds, has no muscle on him at all, and he challenges me to a fight. And like a coward, I go run in the corner weeping. But then let's say that walking behind that man is another man who stands beside him who is seven feet tall, 400 pounds, solid muscle, and he challenges me to a fight. And then I find out I have a choice. I can fight the little man, or I can fight the big man. Now, it doesn't matter anymore how afraid I am of that little man. It doesn't matter anymore if I'm a coward. That's no longer in the equation. I have to fight someone, so the coward that I am, if I've got to fight one of these two guys, I'm going to jump on the little guy. <laughs> You're the little guy. It's just relative. It's just a choice. I've got to deal with you or I've got to deal with him. I choose you. All of you. All six billion of you, if you came together and amassed all your strength together and came against His throne, you would be like a tiny gnat beating its head against the world of granite. I'm fighting you. Do you see? That's nothing to do with courage. That's to do with Him. I'm not getting out of here without fighting someone. So, what are you going to do? Do you have standards that you're willing to die for? Are you willing to stand when everyone else is sitting, bowing, kneeling? And do you have a God that you can lean on? A God that empowers you, a God that envelops you with his presence, a God that is undefeated. And he, he calls you, men. Are you a dangerous man? Be dangerous. And that's all I got to say about that today, heroes. Be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. And be strong out there. Peace. Bye.